move over kids today is saturday the something i don't know the 13th um it is time for the saturday podcast we have ourselves devin from rat boy collectibles jonathan from oh i'm blanking i don't even know why i'm blanking right bandana game he has a bandana on his head and i'm blanking and then just david just david from pizza planet uh so <laughs> welcome guys william is not here today he was not feeling well he put in his two weeks at his job of 1400 years and just said you know what he's probably just partying it up right now but no he was not feeling well but guys so the biggest news let's just jump right into the biggest news 60 formula you are first man in my heart you are first always <laughs> what's up calf um what do you guys think about the switch mini i'll tell you what william said william said that no matter what he was going to oh calf is watching an ad right now i appreciate that i really do appreciate that i don't really like um uh i'm not gonna beg people for money but i do beg people to watch the video ads because those i figure you know that's the revenue that's how everybody can chip in a little bit here and there uh just with your time because your time is very very valuable but uh william said that he was gonna buy a switch mini watching an eight minute ad i don't know if i'd be i don't know if i'm that dedicated though i you know a 30 second ad is probably what i would do um uh w w william said that he was gonna buy a switch mini for margo his wife and he was gonna become a two switch household what do you guys think about this switch mini pros cons anything are you gonna get one who show of hands who's gonna get one right now anyone okay we got bandana gamer right now so david that you think pokemon. about it that bandana pokemon. gamer why are you do you have a switch right now yes okay so you have a switch why are you getting a switch mini um i'm i'm i was kind of like halfway raising my hand uh the biggest thing is that pokemon one is beautiful like, yeah that, yeah that coloring on that is really cool um i still play my 2ds okay i really like the form factor of the 2ds um and just having a more portable system i love the switches portable-esque but i mean this this guy doesn't go in a pocket very well yeah it's I, just you know yeah it's uh the 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 switch proper is what i'm calling it the or the original yeah. switch or switch proper i'll use those interchangeably the switch proper is just a little too big without the joy cons it's a it's like a phone but you have to yeah. have those joy cons on and the joy cons are what really make it too big now you are going to lose about an inch of screen I, I believe the screen you have right now on the switch proper is 6.2 and you go down to a 5.5 do you think that's going to be a big deal i don't know i think that's up to the games i mean i've played console games that don't translate well to the big screen and whatnot mm -hmm. uh, i mean it, it depends on how, how you're programming the text i don't think that's gonna hurt a lot of switch experiences possibly tiny troopers tiny troopers might not play as well if just because this the text will be even smaller well, I don't think anybody but you opened Tiny Troopers, to tell you the truth. I think everybody was... I have was... the rarest copy. Huh? I have the rarest copy. Yeah, the rarest copy, the opened copy. Um, <laughs> Nintendo, it, or uh, EPS 5000, who I bumped up to moderator, is... Um, he so thank you uh, EPS five thousand for being a moderator. Uh, he is saying that he's going to he wants the turquoise one, but he's going to wait and see if there's a Zelda one. Kind of like you, Bandana Gamer. He he wants Nintendo is known for with their three DS two DS family making a bunch of like exclusive or or limited editions and they've already right off the bat did a did a pokemon limited edition and so i know you were talking about that devin because of the drop date of september 20th happening on the drop date of my boy link in link's awakening um what do you think what are the odds rap boy are we gonna get are we gonna get a link's awakening switch mini light i gotta i gotta mini still rolls off the tongue yeah, um, I'm just. I was just thinking back. Uh, I can't remember how they announced it, but when like the um, the new 3ds XL came out and they released the uh, Majora's Mask one, that one sold out pretty quick, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but that one became like randomly. They just randomly said, "Here you go," and it was gone. 
I'm thinking that if they don't put out something related to Zelda with that Switch Mini that day because they released the same day, I think it's a lost opportunity. But I think it's also interesting because, like, they, they, they did the main video. They said, here are the three colors. And then somewhere on Twitter, I think, is when the Pokemon one showed up. Yeah, they, and they, 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 they didn't even put mention that it. any spotlight at all. So let's, that's let's, what let's, leads me to believe that they might do something. Let's see. We got Nick Clanton. He's officially in. I also bumped Nick Clanton. I'm trying to get his name right. I've been calling him Clayton, but it's Clant Clanton. He, uh, I bumped him up to moderator too. I figured out how to bump people up to moderator, so like everybody might be moderator soon, <laughs> because I was just like, ooh, moderator, moderator. Um, and then we got Destiny Little. Hey guys, I'm working but listening. We appreciate you, Destiny. Is uh, no a uh, Devin? How do I pronounce no Amy? Noemi and Raquel. No, Noemi, Noemi. Okay, no, Noemi. Okay, I was totally butchering her name last night. Um, <laughs> David, what are your thoughts on the Switch Lite? Uh, I like the form factor of it, just for what, for what the what a smaller Switch would be. I like that the Joy Cons are not detachable. Um, I honestly thought it would be dockable. Really. Yeah, because uh, you know I'm I stay away from rumors, but sometimes they make way to me, and I did hear conflicting things. But one of the things that everyone seemed to agree on was that it would be dockable, and to our surprise, it's not. But um, so I like that. Shout out I to just... Edward right now, Edward Chumas. I like to I want to interrupt you only because I haven't seen Edward on the channel before, so I just wanted to shout out Edward. Yes, Nick, the blue wrench means you're a moderator now. Hopefully <laughs> I didn't even tell him I was gonna make him a moderator. And the ninja's here, he's cooking and listening. Okay, so keep going. Um lost my So you heard a rumor that it was gonna be dockable and now that it's not. Yeah. Um Man, I, I was gonna say one thing about it. Hmm. Well, it's it's. It, I mean, it's finally out. The news broke, so that's that's Do great. I think I don't know if there will be a special edition Link's Awakening one. I think there will be a bundle for sure. That thing that's like a it's a given, like an official um, bundle, right? Something that will either bundle it digitally or with the copy. That would be enough for me to buy it. I'm such a Zelda freak, dude. They could just put like a little itty bitty sticker with the name Zelda on it and a sword, put it through the Z, and that's all I need. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. all I need. I'd be like, that's Zelda enough. That's why I bought the Diablo. <laughs> I bought Diablo Switch because there's a little but circle. With... Just a Ganondorf is on that, though. Yeah, yeah. Seriously, that's the only reason. Zelda. I bought the Mario. I have the Mario Kart 8 Switch bundle because Link is in the background upside down having a good old time. Like, I am such an <laughs> nice. idiot. <laughs> nice. I think my Wii U bundle has the um, just wording that says free uh, Wind Waker download or whatever. Oh, yeah. I need to see that still because I want that. <laughs> <laughs> good luck, man. Good luck. Um, so many memories. I drove, like, three hours across town just to get it. You know what, uh, you, know what you could do with memories? You could get money to buy more memories. Think about that, though. Yeah. Just saying. That's a that's a good way to put it, man. Um, <laughs> I, rem I remember Sold. what I was going to say. Um, uh, it, I guess there's speculation that there is a more powerful chip inside of this. One that has been able to compress what has been given to us in the last two years with the normal Switch and put inside of this, but a little bit better is what I'm hearing. So... I mean, you know how you know how chips are. Chips get better and better every single year. What we could do two years ago, we could do now easily. Yeah, yeah. Chris Carleo said, uh, "Leo Leo makes a good point. If it was dockable, they wouldn't sell any regular switches because uh, a point seven screen bigger would not be enough. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Um, so that's a very good point. And I would say this in regards <clears throat> to the chip." I think that chip is going to be also in the Switch proper because they're about to do a hardware revision on the Switch proper, but they're not saying it's a new Switch. So I think what they're doing is they're just, um, you know, no pun intended, switching the boards out of the original Switch to be the exact same in the Switch Mini. Okay. 
That's a fairly common process in console life. Yeah. And boards get cheaper to make. Yeah, so everything will stay the same with us, though. Whoever has one, it's not like suddenly right. Breath of the Wild 2 is not going to be playable on, on year one switches. It's just no. it's just going to be playable. Mm-hmm. So can I ask, what does everybody think about the D-pad coming back? Uh, uh, Go yeah, on. that was a that was a detail I saw there. That's that's I think that's only a positive thing. I know that there have been complaints about the D-pad being four separate buttons. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't mind them. I have um, my hands are a little bit smaller, so it doesn't really matter either way for me. Um, but I think this is only a positive because you can just um, you know you could you can uh, it, it's a little bit more um, um, what's the word I'm looking for. It just fits a little bit better on the thumb, I suppose. It's more tactile. So I love playing fighting games online, and the hoary little attachment Joy-Con that's not a Joy-Con that they made. This guy that I keep holding up, yeah, uh, has been my favorite Switch accessory. I Is mean, it better? I, I I like I enjoy it a lot more. I enjoy playing in portable mode a lot more with this. Okay. Uh, it's for 25 bucks. It's been a great addition for this, for my switch. And it's Zelda themed. I wish the other side was Zelda themed because it's a little asymmetrical. Now. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. <laughs> but, but it's worth it. <laughs> now that isn't a full blown joy con though, because it has to no. be attached, right? Yeah, it is stripped. There's no rumble. There is no, uh, it, no extra stuff. And it has to be attached. It is only for handheld mode. Okay, uh, I, but I was more comfortable just paying twenty five for that than trying to Frankenstein some Joy Cons. Yeah, I've seen people do that. It's so unbelievably hard. I would not advise anybody to do that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm glad he, the Pro Controller is awesome to me. I love the Pro Controller, oh, yeah. but I didn't realize the D pad was not as good until I played Tetris ninety nine. Tetris, and oh, it, like Tetris nine. That's the only time I bust out the Joy Cons. Yeah, because uh, the it was EPS five thousand. He was like, "The D pad sucks. Try a Joy Con." And I used the Joy Con, and the Joy Con because it did not have a D pad, I was able to do a lot better with. I noticed that too. And so I, after that, it was like almost like it was almost like taking the blue pill in the Matrix. After that, I could just tell that the D pad was not as great as it should be. And I was just thankful that only taunts were available in Smash Brothers on that D-pad because it would be a mess if mm-hmm. um if something was like reliant on it, you know, in Smash Brothers. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I'm uh, so I hope they they fixed all their problems in regards to it with the D-pad. But I'm glad the D-pad is back. Uh, and which, if you had to get a color, uh, what would you get? Um, well, just to point out, it's pretty funny that going a couple months ago, we saw that shell leak that was turquoise or off blue or that kind of like off teal color. And we're like, that's not, that can't be. Dude, I totally ripped that apart. I did a whole video about how stupid that that looked. (laughs) I just think it's funny that that was actually real. That's what we're getting. (laughs) Looking back, it's, uh, I mean, now it just, it looked so out of place and so weird that it could that it could have been real at the time yeah you know because i think uh similar to iphones apple when they're doing their production in china something will leak seven months prior to release and it's like pink or like some weird brown color (laughs) yeah it ends up being the actual form factor of the newest iphone so it's just probably just like a cheaper color to produce or whatever a prototype yeah, that um that leak from a couple months back that had the rainbow on the side or whatever, and it wasn't. I mean, it wasn't like a real rainbow. It was just like one of those um dumb like Snapchat <laughs> filter. Yeah, like a Snapchat filter rainbow. <laughs> I was just like, no way. But now there's two things. The reason why I'm still on the fence if that was real or not is because a, it's almost logical. Like anybody could have guessed the shape of the new switch light. Like uh-huh. any. 
like there's no way anybody could have not guessed it like what else could it have been however that said the reason why i believe now that maybe that was a legit leak was that the color like of all the colors they chose you know what i mean they chose the color that was right and there was only three colors and the Pokemon one to choose yeah. from. So that's the reason I believe maybe now may it was legit. He says Edward's saying maybe dark green. Dark green is the one that he's going to be getting. I, well, he said dark green, and that's why I assume he's going to be getting. Um, I, I, I need more colors, man. I, I love them. I love the color selection. I think yellow, if I had to get one, it would be yellow. Um, but I need more colors. Yeah. I, I, what would be I'm the perfect color for David? For me, it'd be pink. Pink? Why pink? Because, yep. man, Kirby. Um, yeah. It's just that that color that probably uh, it's not. It's, it's eye catching. It's not very masculine, right? So I, I like going against the grain and just getting it because I because I can, you know. I would do the same thing too. Oh, yeah. Are you guys just trying to pick up chicks? Are you trying to be like the sensitive guy? You know, <laughs> just like, hey, look at him. Aw, David. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much, man. <laughs> yes, check out my switch. It's pink. Now let's go and uh, have some dinner. I'm trustworthy. <laughs> right, I'm trustworthy. <laughs> uh, Destiny oh Little, is there a purple one? No. The colors are what? Gray, turquoise, and yellow. yellow. And it's mm-hmm. like it's like Pikachu yellow, right? Or construction, right. construction Mario. Like a Pikachu yellow. Or yeah, Pikachu yellow. Yeah, yeah. There's there's been some mock-ups. I mean, Photoshop's going around the internet of like Game Boy themed mini switches. Like, oh yeah, I saw that. I would be on that. Mm-hmm. So super quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, because I I love the Game Boy aesthetic. Uh, it's just uh, like, it's just Dave, like are you talking about there. these? Just... What is Nick. it? Nick is asking. Um, he sees the the world bag behind me. That world bag was given by Chris Carleo, actually. Uh, but a uh, rat boy, what is the Yoshi hiding behind you, over your right shoulder? The only Yoshis I have are the the little the yarn Yoshis that I have hiding all over the place. Like uh, for me, my uh, not to take away Devin's. I like sorry. It's all good. I just am showing it off what what he was talking about. I assume fistful of Yoshi. That. Like the, I have so many of these things going. My, my favorite um, 3DS model, including 2DS, 3DS XL, all that good stuff. To me, it's the Black Friday one where it has the colored buttons. The Famicom colors? Super oh, Famicom. yeah, yeah. No, it's – um. well, I guess it is. I guess it actually coincidentally is Famicom correct, right? But yeah. it has that, that – it's the new 3DS where right? it's got this uh, – the this, little, uh, yeah, the little like a um, little er- eraser head type of thing, <laughs> yeah. And I love it because it has the interchangeable face plates. It's got you can customize oh, it, yeah, and, if, it, and it's perfect size for me. If the Switch Mini has interchangeable face plates, that would be like they could sell so much, they, so they much. Could. Yeah, they could. They could. Uh, they could bring that over from a less than popular 3ds model you know like the Mm -hmm. the new 3ds i think was like in its last leg i think it's the last model prior to the 2ds something new two new 2ds xl i think was Mm -hmm. so trying to keep track of the 2ds the 2ds's uh is like how was it it was like 3ds it was 3DS, then 3DS XL, then new 3DS XL, 2DS. Because this thing, that I just, the thing that I just pulled out, it's um, it was announced in Japan in 2014 or 2013. And I was like, it'd be perfect if it came over here because uh, it's got interchangeable face plates. It was Japan only for like two, three years. That's, and finally... a, that's a 2DS, but not the XL. It's a 3D, new 3DS. Oh, it's a yeah. new 3DS. Okay. Mm-hmm. But not the XL. But not the XL because uh because it's got like this toy feel to it, and I'm a big fan of that. I'm a big fan of cameras that have a toy like feel, but still take like incredible fo- photos. I f- feel like it's like a the weird dichotomy to it. Mm-hmm. But, okay, not right, let's to... all try to find out what the Yoshi thing is. And yeah, I'm trying to figure this out too. Is it my uh, the what's it called the Hot Wheel cars behind me? <laughs> Nick says. Um... Okay, so still the right one. Barely poking his head up behind something on the dresser. Devin, talk more so I can see your room. 
What's going on? Okay. I can't see. Okay, I, was I see sitting a here like this. Is it a stuffed animal, Nick? <laughs> I spy with my little eye. I know. It's There's like a, we're looking for it. Really really day night night thing. I spy in Devin's room. Yeah, basically. Hold yeah, on. What do we got here? What do we got here? Devin's been doing a lot of point. Tell him to the point. Um, is Go it by left. Thanos? Tell us what character it's by. Is it by Thanos? We're looking for something Yoshi right now. Um, there's a Luigi I see. Amiibo. I see Big uh, Big Brother down low. It I looks like a white box in front of Br the Breath of the Wild box. A white box in front of the Breath. Oh, I think it's the egg thing. Is it the egg thing? The Devin, can you hear me? I don't think Devin can hear me. Baby, come back. Baby, come back, David. Oh, man. The thing that I'm, I'm trying to buy something on eBay right now, and it just jumped up to $142. I'm going to spend – I have some gift cards, though. Um, I think he's talking about your egg thing. It's not a Yoshi thing. He said Speaking it's of, uh... Breath of the Wild right in front of uh, – it's a white box right in front of Breath of the Wild. Speaking this? of eBay, man, um, I, I think that where did that uh, where did that link that link figurine that we got at E three is it yeah. jumping up still? It's it's uh it's hovering at seventy. Wow. Okay. Kind of what I we said it'd be under hundred, right? Yeah, I bet once the link with Zelda collectors really get it. See what happens with Zelda games is. Everybody gets into Zelda for a minute and then they just like buy all the newest stuff, right? And they'll make that E3 thing very rare. But then after like two or three years, they stop they stop loving Zelda again and they just sell it. So that'll probably drop to $40 at one point and then it'll creep back up. Whatever the initial price is, unless there's a re-release like Hello Kitty for the Wii U, um, it, it creeps back up to the price. Something like... Um, uh, Devil's Third on the Wii U that went down. That was like selling for like 100, 120. Then it dropped down to 50, and now it's back up to like 80, 90. I think. Now, Nick, this is what you're talking about, though. I think that's. Hang on. Yes, I think that's what he was talking about. So, okay. what are those? This is a Hello Kitty character called Gudetama. 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 I love Gudetama. I don't yeah, know Gudetama. Uh, what is Gudetama? He's an egg. It's, lazy egg. It, yeah, the Japanese translation is lazy egg. Lazy egg? <laughs> and this, it, it's like a little vinyl figure that is supposed to be a, to, a Tomago um, sushi roll. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Nice. I have a coffee cup. I have a coffee cup and six Gudetama socks. Dude, Gudetama is one of my favorite ones besides Agritsuko right there. You, you know, guys, character. there's a chance... And Taft, don't be sorry. When when your mom calls, you have to answer your, that call. Um, there's a chance that Hello Kitty, I could see a crossover in the new Animal Crossing. Did you know that there have been two crossovers with Animal Crossing so far with Hello Kitty? Yeah, the stuff is actually in Pocket Camp. I yep. looked. Oh, is it in Pocket Camp? Yep, there's Pocket Camp uh, merchandise or, or stuff like that. And then there are... You can speak on this, uh, Devin. What are the amiibo cards in Hello Kitty? Uh, the amiibo cards, there's only six of them. Each pack came with the full collection, and they work with the um, the RV game. I can't remember what it was called. I think it was just New Leaf. It just they, it was an add-on. No, I thought, no, it was Happy Home Designer. Happy Home Designer, yeah. Oh, it was, was it? an add-on, either that or New Leaf. I can't really remember right now. And was it but items again? They yeah, it was items that go inside of the RV, and they the the cards themselves are the rarest amiibo cards. Like a pack still sealed is easily can go for almost two hundred dollars. Oh wow! And they were I, only released in a Japanese game, or were they? I thought they were released in um, Europe also. I think they might have been released in Europe, but I don't know. I just I, the only ones I've ever seen were Japan uh, from Japan. Sorry. Gotcha. Gotcha. And I've been trying to get, like, I have a full collection of series one and two, three, uh, like three, four and five are really hard to find for me. I didn't even know there was three, four and five. Um, Bandana Gamer, what have you, uh, what have you been playing lately? Uh, well, I played SNK Heroines for mm. the Nintendo Switch and just did a video on that. Wh what uh, is that game? Is it a fighting game? It's a fighting, tag team fighting game. 
uh, for the Switch. It's at ten dollars right now at GameStop. I, uh, what? That's a good price. <laughs> I yeah, forgot I, I, William, William clued me into that. I ended up getting a copy of it too. Yeah. I forgot um, I bought it, and I found it the other day in my closet, and I was like, "This is a pleasant surprise, still sealed too." Nice. I don't so, know anything about it. What kind of is it? Like Street Fighter? It's a very like. So it's an all female cast from the SNK games, mm-hmm. um, which is King of Fighter, Fatal Fury. That Kevin's got it up. Um, it it it's fairly simplistic. It's trying to like onboard a lot of people to fighting games. Yeah. Um, but it has some weird mechanics, like knockout mechanics, are not like beat the life bar. You have to like beat the life bar down and then hit a special move. It has a bunch of one button specials. Gotcha. Um, it was okay. I don't think it's really. It wasn't really meant to be a really highly competitive street, <laughs> like fighter game. It's, it's not. It's not Mortal Kombat then. No, <laughs> no. It's, it's very tongue in cheek because. Uh, Kombat with anime girls. No. <laughs> um, yeah. SNK is. Um, I would say like they're. If we're talking about King of Fighters, their flagship. You know, character like Ryu for Street Fighter is Terry Bogart. Yeah, I was gonna say t- there's a female version of Terry in this game. Yeah, they they fe- they pretty much what they did is they just like female versioned that character. So that's in the story mode. He's been turned into a woman. Mm-hmm. And, and so it, it's, his it's hat. Really of of he, he talks about not wanting the other male fighters to see him. Wait, so uh, is he still a, is he's still a male? But they like he's pretending to be a female in this game. Or? No, no, he's a girl. He's female. He's turned into a woman. Yeah, yeah, and his uh, his his hat instead of saying Fatal Fury say says Fatal Cutie, I think. Yeah, but uh, um, well, all right then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. check out that bargain bin review. Think I'll think I'll sma- I'll st- I'll keep a Smash Friday night. Definitely should. <laughs> no. I, I think that's in your best interest. Maybe a two a.m. a two a.m. Uh, heroin stream. What do you guys think? <laughs> Dude, uh, you, there, you get it like 60 a, years, that's for sure. There was a oh. uh, pre-order bonus for this. Look at that. So you Where'd you get uh, Dragon Builders 2? Love that. Love the first one. Where? What did you get? Uh, where did you get that from? Uh, GameStop. GameStop. It came with a sheet of like uh, those um, thin magnets. Thin magnets. Okay. And uh, do you have the thing? Ma- do you have them? Uh, they're downstairs. Actually, I didn't bring them oh, up. I should. No worries. I, I realized that they were magnets when I had the game and the magnets right here, and I'm like, wait a minute. Like, I should get these away. <laughs> <laughs> um, Calf, uh, yeah. Calf threw down his friend code. You guys should uh, definitely, if you're a Smash fan, uh, friend code him. He makes some really cool stages. Um, show them, show us what's sword. inside. Show us what's inside Dragon Builders. And do you have a – does anybody want to talk over it? and say what dragon builders is about well it, it the the game that i got i'm not sure if this is just like a first print thing but it comes with a stackable slime recipe something that you can build within the game nice um slime is that blue little creature right yeah it, and basically. they come in other other random colors like uh on the picture it's got uh, green blue orange pink black and white all stuff i love the reversible art though i like when the switch games come oh, with them i love when games do that so do I. I What's the other like side look like? Better than this one. Okay, so is oh, that yeah. so that's the one that comes with it's it. It's really got like a Kira Toriyama's like art oh, yeah. style, pen here, style too. It's not like CGI renders. Yeah. No. So are like you, are you gonna flip it then? Are you gonna are you gonna reverse it or do you just do you keep it in there like just knowing that it's reversible? I I'm gonna actually reverse it right now. I like this one better personally. Uh, and Kev, yeah, it's part. Dragon Quest Minecraft. It's it's Zelda, it's Zelda Link to the Past had a baby with Minecraft basically. It's yeah, awesome. I played I the it. first one on my Xbox, but I haven't played it on the Switch. But I'm definitely gonna try it out soon. That was no. the game, the first game that my kids really got into watching, um, and it was actually when I started my channel was the I was talking about Minecraft a lot, or not Minecraft, um, Dragon Quest. So. That will Dragon Quest will always have a special place in my heart, only because just like Labo will, like those two things were happening when this channel was starting. So, um, what about you, David? Have you had any time to play any games? I know you haven't been playing Smash on Fridays. Where you been, dude? Someone's been there's been people coming close to that belt. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I've been playing. I've been playing Smash on my own time. Really, actually, I've been really trying to get 
a lot better actually i actually changed my the layout the layout of my uh button format for the controllers oh wow you're going you're going real pro yeah because um my cousin works with this guy and uh i found out that he plays smash and we've all linked up and um we had a I had a very humbling moment a couple weeks ago with him. So, oh, I hate those. <laughs> um, so it's just been kind of like just trying to get better, but also a perfect balance of not letting it consume my free time. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's uh, but yeah, I've been playing a lot of Smash. Um, that's really it, man. I I do speaking about SNK. Um, I was talking to my friend that it would be very cool if the next two slots for the uh dlc fighters if one was heihachi or Jin from tekken mm. and also terry bogart from snk for king of fighters if they're gonna put in another fighter fighting game street fighter 2 i think represents the fighting games if they put in another if they put in tekken then i'm gonna really i'm gonna really campaign for, for sub-zero or scorpion because yeah. You know, and they can have uh, their babe babalities or their friendship alities or whatever you call them. <laughs> they don't have to go all like smash alities, man. They'll make it a custom one. For yeah, that. make it a smash ality. Someone can say finish him, and it's just a whole new whatever. Yeah, but, and then they would have the toasty guy coming in. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm sorry if if we're gonna if we're gonna get another. I understand why Ken and Ryu are in, but if we get Tekken, then I'm gonna have to say we gotta get. We gotta get uh, Scorpion and Sub Zero. I would I prefer know. it over another sword character. I know that's a meme right now. Another yeah. sword character, but <laughs> personally, I don't know. Like the same way I feel with like the Fire Emblem characters, I already feel like there's too much. I yeah. personally would feel like there's way too many fighters there. I want an array of different ones. Like when they added Banjo, that was perfect. Mm -hmm. I want another differently controlled character. Well, now when you think that... about it, I mean after Banjo. And if you're excluding third party pivotal people like Steve, Master Chief, I, I agree with what Cap said Ezio would actually be cool. It's like a representative from um, Assassin's Creed. Ooh, you would, uh, yeah, Assassin's Creed would be awesome, especially with Ubisoft's uh, with Ubisoft or the, even a rabbit would be okay. I wouldn't want yeah. them in, but they would. They have the lineage. Assist, assist trophy, rabbit if assist they, trophy. If they added yeah. the rabbit. Not Before Raymond as a main yeah. character, that's a loss. That would be that would be I would be, I would be mad about my deal. <laughs> but me too. wait a sec, but but hear me out. I mean, they've already teamed up with Mario successfully, so it's almost okay. like but that's I mean, a whole different thing. Is and that's, it? that's the whole point of Smash. You want to see people you haven't seen. Like you could have a game where Sub Zero could fight Ryu. Yes. That would go huge. Oh yeah. But that would be this, huge. That would I be... don't really personally consider that the like the rabbits are any part of the Rayman thing just because I like old Rayman alone. Mm -hmm. Me too. And like it would be also just as random if they added Globokes instead of Rayman. <laughs> Pretty yeah, I guess you're so, right. Rayman's never getting in because they they can't figure out an amiibo for him. <laughs> yeah, that's really Yeah, true. you would have to put like invisible segments in between <laughs> the body part. Um, so really true, Rayman's actually. lost. Uh, I don't want to Carmen San Diego. Huh? I want Carmen San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> that is so random, and because you said that, that might happen. <laughs> let's get let's get her. I or she could just at least up here. She could be like the toasty guy. What's the um, show from the nineties? The uh, Saturday morning cartoon. I wouldn't even say it was Saturday morning. It was like uh, five a.m. in the morning. Not not Carmen where San Diego. In the same, world is same Carmen company. San was, Diego. Uh, <laughs> The, uh, where on Earth is Carmen Sandiego, which was the Fox Kids cartoon show. The um, the mummies. You guys remember that show about mummies? I think I do. Oh, actually, yeah, like, I think I do. It, am I am I turning some cogs like that? Are what was that called? Uh, something I think mummies, it was called, like the real life mummies or something like that. Yeah, and it was I like, like Mighty Max. Mighty Max was my man. Dude, Mighty Max, I love those. <laughs> I think it had like one season, but I'll tell you, and it was only there to sell, sell, um, sell some toys. But Mighty Max, sell boy Polly Pockets. Yeah, pretty much. And you know, did you know Netflix rekindled uh, "Where in the World Is Carmen Sandiego"? But now she's like, now she's using her, 
her um She's stealing like a good powers guy. for good. She had a face turn, so no. yeah, she had a face turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, weak. <laughs> Carmen's supposed to always be evil. Yep. Yeah, who's gonna steal the fire from this? It was, uh, David. It was called Mummies Alive. There it is. Mummies Alive. Uh, EPS says at Sailor Moon to Smash. Hmm. Uh, you guys know Hamtaro is actually a Nintendo property. Hamtaro, Hamtaro? what's that? Well, that was Nintendo property. It was a. Uh, I, I could. I'm going to consider it an anime, but mm-hmm. what, really, <laughs> it was a, a an anime about hamsters. <laughs> That was so funny. Is that that new I hamster like game that's coming out with Disney characters? No, no that's Sim Sims, I think. No, um, no. Um, I, I woke. I woke. I can't believe I'm saying this. I woke up at like five in the morning to watch that Hamtaro show one time <laughs> <laughs> during a school day too. Welcome I shouldn't to laugh. Truth. I just posted a video today about why my horse and me was so important to my life. So I can't really laugh at you. <laughs> Oh man, I uh, I used to get up. Let's see, what was the dumbest things I used to? I'd I'd get up to watch the monkeys. Hey hey, we're the monkeys, always what? monkeying around. And um, Power Rangers, I would watch. I would like have to watch all of the Power Rangers. I didn't know that other people were doing it too, because everybody was too cool to uh, to say they were watching Power Rangers. But I totally watched Power Rangers right Dude, before school. The, the original Rangers season. Fantastic. Did anybody? This is really random and probably off topic, but did anybody watch the show called the uh, the Banana Splits? <laughs> no, uh, this is a family yeah. show. Are you sure you're talking about it? Bananas and pajamas. I watched banana and pajamas. <laughs> a coming down, down the split. stairs. Oh. Banana and pajamas. You're in a silly mood, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is. I like that Devin said I, this may be off topic, and I'm trying to sit here and go, what is our topic? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I thought the same thing. He was like off topic. I'm like, do we have a topic? <laughs> we usually stick to a theme of sorts. <laughs> I think our theme we want is... We bananas and pajamas in Smash Brothers. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And you could, they could be echoes of Ice Climbers. That would be yes. Awesome. Oh, yes. <laughs> Make it happen. <laughs> The final smash would be them tripping down the stairs. (laughs) Let's just keep the Teletubbies away, though. Oh, please, no. Those things are evil. Yes. And Uh, then the angry sun in in one of the stages could be the baby sun. sun. Yes. All right, we're getting too deep into this. Did anybody notice that the angry sun in Super Mario Maker has, like, a really weird face now? Yeah, it's not the same. I like in the older versions, like if you go to like Super Mario 2, it still looks normal, but I think it's in Super Mario 3D World, it looks really awkward. I don't really like it. It doesn't look angry, it looks bored. <laughs> maybe that's what uh, that's maybe that's what I saw at that in because I was thinking this does not look like the sun at all. So I guess I, it was just I updated. thought it was just part of the background until it started doing the spin. I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> Oh, you know what? AKA Ruben, uh, he says a good combo would be uh, Ratchet and Clank. That would be a good one. I think they've earned their spot. They're not. They're uh, not PlayStation exclusives, are they? Before Jack and Daxter, though, PlayStation straight. Uh, I think I'd, I'd like Jack and Daxter before them, but yeah, yeah I, I would say I, Jack and Daxter is more meaningful to me. Mm-hmm. I don't really like Ratchet and Clank compared to them. Do you think? Do you think we're getting another Fire Emblem? Because it would probably. It would stay- it would stand to reason every Fire Emblem franchise gets another Fire Emblem character, just like every Pokemon franchise gets. Yeah, Byleth. I'm thinking Byleth is going to make it in. Byleth. Is he the one with the whip sword? He's the avatar, yeah. He has the whip sword, so. I and really, then... really hope not, though. I wish, like, if they do that, I think it should be promotional D- DLC and not a part of the DLC. That's pack. a good point. That like, would be they awesome. Put out three houses. Here's this character. Check him out in Smash. Yeah, yeah. that would be cool. That and like they just simply add a code in, like okay, you bought three houses. Here's the code to get him in Smash. That would be that. a way to sell three houses because Americans don't like Fire Emblem. I love, I personally love Fire Emblem. I can't wait. But it's uh, not even the fact that I don't like Fire Emblem. I'm bad at the games. I like the characters. I just think there's too many. <laughs> Ken, you might you might be incorrect with that with what you said about the Americans not liking because I think Awakening. Pun intended, actually kind of revitalized the franchise. It, it sells seem, like hotcakes. It seemed to, but it didn't like it didn't seem like it got a lot of love when it came to um the next one that came out. I forget what it is. Fates? 
Face? No, Face went nuts. Was yeah. it? Mm-hmm. Awakening oh, was literally again what he was saying. What awoke in the Fire Emblem's craze in this country, in, in yeah. my opinion. I think that the the this is this is it. I think this is the the big push for mainstream right now. Is if if three houses can go can can break into the mainstream, this will be. This is the best chance they've got. And I think they will, because if you look at Amazon's top five Switch games, it's already number one. Is it? Yeah, it beat out like Mario Maker, beat out Smash Brothers. But I'm as afraid, far as like reserve, reserved copies. So. I'm afraid people are going to get like um, buyer's remorse on it, though. Because when you see all the like sweet like cut scenes and stuff, that's nothing like the game. The game is a turn-based strategy game, you know? So like all these cut scenes are the, just that. It's not gameplay, it's cut scenes. <coughs> and but I'm... A- I'm afraid people are going to be like, what did I sign up for when it came to this? And it's Nintendo's hardest franchise. Didn't they though, do what like Monster Hunter World did, which was like kind of aim for the American audience on this one? Like they I, changed some core gameplay mechanic. Like they got rid of the <laughs> triangle. That's a good point. So, I mean, Monster Hunter World really elevated that franchise man isn't that the best selling capcom title of all time like that broke a record a year ago and that convinced them to generations ultimate on switch i mean it just brought attention to that franchise that in the states it it blew it past the cults thing there's still a dlc that's about to come out or if it just came out a standalone game iceborne oh i thought it was dlc okay no dlc is it? Because I know yeah. they're selling it as a... Well, I mean, maybe it's like a physical as well, because I think they're selling the um, the physical disc, but it's yeah. probably like 40 bucks. Yeah, or it might be a standalone DLC thing. You could do either way. Yeah. Kind of like yeah. a Xenoblade uh, Torna sure. country. Yeah. And, uh, uh, that's another thing. I've been noticing a Targets and a few other stores are clearancing that, uh, that um, physical copy of that. Oh, yeah, how much? I've seen as low as 20, I want to say, but I, I still, can't remember. I still need that, and Xenoblade is a fabulous series. And that's what I'm hoping happens with, um, I'm hoping, because I think Xenoblade on, finally got the recognition it deserved on the Switch. And I think it came out just at that perfect time. It scratched the itch that people still had after Breath of the Wild. And I'm really hoping Fire Emblem can kind of keep going strong. Bree, we're getting five Fire Emblem characters. Please, no. Uh, <laughs> I want the final two downloadable characters to be Fire Emblem characters. Just, no, just, want, just to laugh. I'm just do something. Put Grunty. I want Grunty. The, Who's the Grunty? From, uh, He's Mando. talking about Gruntilda? <laughs> or whatever. I thought it was Grunty. No, it is, it is. It, that's the shortened version, but... Um... That would be that would be fun actually. If you I could like get one indie character and Steve doesn't count, one indie character in, who would it be? Isaac. Isaac, okay. Uh it makes sense. Are, are you talking about heart or gut? Uh do both then. Oh my gut's Undertale. Yeah, mine too. Frisk and Sands or and or. So um, Actually no, if... I have someone else who I would pick or who would be my gut. But who who else? If you're talking about um, um, heart, well, I honestly really can't tell you. I don't. I don't know a, a prominent indie game that I've played, or any indie game that I've really played and finished and like loved. Actually, another one that I thought about the character from Dead Cells. Oh yeah. yeah. Kind of I like can, a I can see that. sword stealthy character. Uh, I think it would be cool. He's not. He's not. He's definitely not uh, indie. But I would like the ninja to come in from Ninja Gaiden. No. But that's not indie either. That Rio Hayabusa. Really? Yeah, I know that. That just popped in my head for some reason because I was like messenger. Then I was like, wait, if we're gonna get the messenger, let's just throw in the original. What about you, Bandana? Who would you uh, indie? Who do you think? Uh, one I would love to see is Gunvolt from Ezra Striker, which is kind of like the spiritual successor to Mega Man Zero. I would, I would like to see Gunvolt get a um, little more love. And I would love to see actually, and this is just therapeutic. I would love to see Beck from Mighty Number no. Nine. Just because I want to see my Mega Man kick his ass, but <laughs> yeah, kick his butt. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. In in that game, uh, Beck is actually pretty cool. I think that kind of like revitalized him a little bit. You know who I yeah, think? Mighty Gunbolt stuff. Yeah. 
You know who I think would have a good chance if they were going indie and that wasn't Steve? Uh, Celeste. I think Celeste would have a very good chance. People at Nintendo love really love her. Mm-hmm. We'd love to see her come in. She'd be and really and Celeste won Game of the Year for the uh, yeah. Game Awards. So there's I don't comments. think it, it was nominated. It didn't win. But yeah, but I mean, that's huge. It's still, it's still, I mean, an indie game just to be nominated. Yep. Yeah. I mean, five games. Um, let's see. Someone said Earthworm Jim. Um, that would. Could you imagine? I was never an Earthworm Jim fan, but I don't know. He feels like, to me, he feels like he would fit in the Banjo Kazooie realm. Uh, someone totally who hasn't agree. had a game in a while, but you know, definitely I has think, a strong heritage. I think his last game was on the N sixty four. It was Earthworm Jim three D, if I'm not mistaken. So I can't really I, remember. I know he had a cartoon, but he definitely started in in the video game, so he could make it in. I think they just really started. The- yeah, they're starting. A, he's starting to get a little more cred. There's a company that just did a like a almost like a reproduction cart that has Earthworm Jim one and two on it. It's sold out really quick, and apparently there was a rare copy of it that like every twenty copies would get like this cow print cart. Oh yeah, yeah, I saw that. I actually wanted. I did. I didn't buy it in time. Uh, Jimmy and Billy from Double Dragon would also be a good choice. I'm reading Calf right now. Uh, Battle Toads. Um, anyone from Streets of Rage? Streets of Rage. Skate. Skate would be really cool from Streets of Rage. I want. I want. Uh, if, if you're going to go go that far back, the characters from Ra- Ra- either River City Ransom or Contra, I think, might have a good chance. Ooh, Contra. I don't know if Contra could do it. They're just all guns. I mean, they're just Rambo, you know. <laughs> well, true, but they're still pretty cool characters. Um. He's got a reboot coming for uh, Earthworm Jim, so so well, I the, uh, William's not here to say it. The, the um, Amico is going to have that Earthworm Jim game coming out on it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. That's so weird to me that Earthworm Jim is going to be an exclusive to Amico. <laughs> in the, in the world full of nostalgia, you know, pulls, you you you'd think that it would um, he'd have something by now. I mean, they brought back Bubsy. They brought back. Um, yeah, I'm still surprised the Bubsy on fire. <laughs> Battletoads has a game coming out. Um, it's like they they harken back to this nostalgia thing, and uh, that's their selling point. And Earthworm Jim doesn't have like a brand spanking new thing. Seems that's like- why Nintendo's doing so good right now. They they weathered the storm of like the new gamer. And now it's all back to the old gamer. <laughs> People like us, they weathered the storm. And David, I know you're like, you're kind of like an old soul, David. And same with you, De- Devin, in regards to what you're, you you like. Whenever I see somebody, I don't know, how old are you, uh, Bandana Gamer? Are you allowed to say? I'm 34. 34? Okay, well, I guess I'm the 34. oldest one here. I, I don't – people tend not to guess my age because I think oh, yeah. Asians, we, we don't age until we're like 80, and then boom, <laughs> we're just old. <laughs> wow. So it's like – I don't know what to do with that information, man. Yeah, I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Like I'm 39 years old, and no one – everyone's like, what? I'm like, yeah, it's the Mario shirt I wear, and I shave my head. You guys can't tell that I'm like old. It, has, <laughs> has anybody watched the movie Kill Bill? Yes. Yeah. I'm thinking of the uh, the person who trained the bride with that long white oh, beard. Yeah, dude. Dude. <laughs> I do that. I do that at parties and stuff. I mean, like uh, the one party I go to a year. Like I say parties. Like <laughs> I don't go something there. Hondo, right? I forget his name, but I know she, he's the person who trained the bride on how she how she fought. He's the sushi master too, right? Yeah. Gives her the, his uh, his blade. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, cheese. Uh, was it a pie chi or something? Anyways, I do that all the time just to annoy my wife um, when I'm, <laughs> when we go somewhere. Because I'm if I don't want to go somewhere, I just do this super villain beard. You just sit there, like I I do that at work. I just unintentionally start petting my own face. <laughs> Dude, I did, did your leg shake when you do it? I mean, all I did was stroke my beard. I was like, yes, I agree <laughs> with all this. It's intriguing. <laughs> what about you, David? What do you do? Do you just twirl your hair? I actually, uh, at work, I've like towards the end, I were working some overtime and towards the end of, of, of work when everyone's gone, I just let it down and I find myself kind of doing this sometimes (laughs) and then it just gradually gets more and more in hair until it covers my whole face. And I'm like, what am I doing? (laughs) When when you let your hair down, do you do one of these? 
<laughs> what was that, Bandana? I figured you just did aerial hair tosses. <laughs> I have to sometimes, man. I mean, it gets in the way, and I'll throw it back, and then it gradually just comes forward and forward. I don't know, man. It's it's the downsides. I mean, Ken seen me in the flesh, so you could he, you can ask him how how much hair I have. It's a lot. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot. Mexicans, I guess, have like they have a full set of hair. Like us Asians, our hair is thin, and it's like you're like you're not fooling anyone. So I had to shave it. But you, <laughs> on the other hand, you, it's like I could not that I did, but if I ran my fingers through his hair, it would get stuck. I would just say that it's pretty coarse. Yeah. <laughs> what are we talk? Coarse. See, Bandana Gamer's right. We don't have topics. We just like, yeah. we we just talk. <laughs> So I guess we can bring it back. I mean, you you have the light. The light is now part of the existing hardware line or will yep, the be. Family. The family. Fa- you've joined the family. <laughs> so logic, I mean, do you think there's still truth to the Switch Pro? I think yes. there is. They said, they said family. Family implies more than just, I mean, no, you can have a family of just two. But I'm thinking, I'm thinking we're going to get um, a big papa. Big Papa's coming home, you know. Four K uh, Ethernet built in kind of thing, USB C that kind of thing, or I mean, it's already got now that. that's that's a little that's a little I I don't know about that. <laughs> Sixty frames a second kind of thing, or what? What do you? What do you? I can't see Nintendo playing that hard. Spec I don't know. I think they're at least going to beef yeah. up the screen and make that a little better. At least 1080 on the screen itself. Do you think it'll be? They'll beef it up just to make it adequate to run like triple a titles like uh devil may cry 5 or resident evil 7 that kind of thing well we are getting more beefy games like the witcher i was surprised yeah to if see. you can get the witcher i mean come on i was very surprised to see the witcher is uh, coming i around. can't wait for digital foundry to run a test and see where the uh, graphical fidelity and the and the frame rate lies yeah I'm curious. I'm curious if witcher 3 pulls it off and it is good then yeah, we get I just about anything. I mean, even Mortal Kombat, from what I hear, is like solid. Like not just and that you was a no name company who ported it over. But yeah, the Mortal Kombat is really cool on the Switch. Yeah, the only yeah, lag cool. thing that I've seen is when you go into the crypt part. I I can't speak too much on it. I've just I've just kept up on like the news in regards because I was really afraid that it would be bad. We could like the Switch can't afford many bad titles. We got. Like, people still, like, will talk about WWE 2K18. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. the Switch can only have, like, 10 bad ports before it becomes a bad port machine. I'm surprised so, that it actually runs MK7 at a decent frame rate and that it looks actually really nice. Yeah, that's why. I mean, so that's why it's like, what? If they did so a So think about it. I mean, if they, that's adequate now. With current Switch hardware, it's running that now. I mean, how much if there is a Switch Pro in production, or at least in in the in the projection for Nintendo, how much more do you think it could be beefed up? I mean, it's got to be a substantial beef up for them to even make a Pro. So you know, I mean, the new XL was the new 3DS wasn't a huge beef up. I mean, it was a beef up, but it still didn't really. Well, it added in the joystick. I think it definitely it, it hardware improved on that one. I can't remember what improved on that one, but it did. There was, there was a stronger CPU, which gave you a few exclusives. Which yeah. that I, mean, I don't know if Nintendo wants to run that risk of making a model that alienates the however many million that have this. Yeah, without, that would be you know, that would be the risk. Like, do you think are you alienating? Like, even on the 3DS, and like you look back to the DSi, there was only one game that was for the DSi specifically. Yeah. And on the 3DS, the new 3DS XL, I think there's only two or possibly no Blade, um, Chronicle, um, Minecraft, the fi- Fire Emblem uh, Warriors game, I think. Yeah, yeah. and Hyrule all the Warriors, Super Nintendo games, yeah, Hyrule, yeah, and Hyrule. Kind of. Hyrule was? I didn't know that. Not, but it doesn't. Yeah, Hyrule Warriors were de- was definitely one of the exclusives. So, um, and I know that they preferred Majora's Mask on the new 3DS, but you could play it on the old 3DS. Because literally, I tried on an old 3DS, and Majora's Mask was basically, are you sure you want to do this? And <laughs> so I was just like, um, I don't know about that. 
Well, I don't know if they're going to do that again. I still think that they're going to um, going to make like a pro of sorts or whatever they're going to call it. But I definitely think they're going to up, update the screen and probably add like an uh, not the HDMI um, Ethernet into the dock. Uh, do no, I, I, sorry, I hope so. Calf got a LAN adapter, and I have a LAN adapter, but gosh, I want that just... David, didn't I send you the LAN adapter a while ago? Yes, thank you. Uh, Bandana, what were you saying? You think they could just make a TV-only version? I mean, that has the higher... That for the higher... I mean... It makes sense. Like, if they made the main switch that can do both, they made the light that can only do the portable, that the next best thing is probably the Pro is going to be an integrated home-only console. Home-only console. And then you put the the price of the screen on the person's TV. Like, you don't have to incorporate that into what you're developing. Yeah. And then you can put, you know, games... Uh, right yeah, I'm rate. torn. I'm torn on that because I get it. The Switch Mini or Lite is not a Switch anymore in reality. Well, it's, it, but just a console only. I don't want that. I want. I want a beefy Switch Pro that I can take anywhere. I don't care if it's bigger. Even you know, I don't need that one to fit in my pocket. What if they? What if they integrate the better chip into the current hardware? So that you have your hybrid, semi beefed up version. You have your portable only, and then you have this like, I wouldn't even say a monster, something to compete with the with the other two guys. Just something that will give us like something substantial to where we can have something just at home, you know, so that Nintendo can cover all parts of the spectrum: hybrid, portable, home. If they so. can get their cloud based saving on better than they than maybe. That but, would be all. <laughs> the but only if, thing I think I, I have to complain about that cloud save thing is the fact that it takes so long to delete the cloud saves. There's a couple of games that I've traded in that I forget are in the cloud save. Yeah. And it's annoying to me. Well, I just don't know about a Switch Pro that's not... My main concern is the Xbox 2 or whatever they're going to call it, Scarlet right now, Project right? It's Scarlet and the PS5. Those are my main concerns. And I, if... I, I could really care less about the PS5. The Project Scarlet is going to be good. I, I Not even just because I'm an Xbox and Nintendo fan, mostly. Yeah. Bandai, I, you look like you were going to say something. More. Like, I just don't see them going after the same markets anymore that... Yeah, Nintendo. they're not. I, Nintendo's trying to do all the portable stuff. Xbox yeah. and PS4 are trying to do like the in-house yeah. awesome graphics thing. They're, they're essentially catching people that fall through the cracks that don't fall under the the umbrellas. Like you've got your Sony fanboys, you've got your yeah. Microsoft fanboys, but you do have a lot of crossover from said umbrellas yeah. coming into Nintendo anyway. Yeah, they yeah. know that Nintendo can't compete when it comes to graphical fidelity. Or, but not, no, the other consoles can compete with the portability, though. Right, not and a, that's that's my point, is that, you know, yes, it's not going to have the most robust online system or uh, or graphical fidelity or, or frames per second or 4K or what have you, but they're going to have those titles where it's just like, like when, I, when we went to California, Ken, John, yeah. you know, John is a PC guy through and through. Uh-huh. He grew up on, like, you know, Blizzard's library. He grew up on 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 the the games of the '90s that were PC only, but then he said that when he met me and introduced me into Nintendo, or didn't introduce me but kept it alive essentially, he said that he was having more fun than some of the best titles he's ever played on the PC. And he says, like Reggie said, if it's not fun, then what's the point? Right. So Nintendo is the best publisher, hands down. Have I mean, to be. For- I mean, take out the system thing. They are the best video game publisher. Yes, hundred percent agree. They have the most diverse. They have a war chest. They 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 stayed in a float during the Wii U years, built based upon their characters. They are like Disney. They're the only company I can think, other than Warner Brothers, I guess, that would have a co- that has such a strong IP list and. Yeah. Like, they've stayed afloat just on video games, really. Like, every once in a while, you get a Kirby animated series and whatnot. It's just only now that Nintendo is really starting to leverage their IPs in a way that is more than just, uh, well, Pokemon also. But 
you know, that's kind of a Pokemon company decision process. It's only now Nintendo is really leveraging. So they've stayed afloat and on top of the game even for 30 years based upon their publishing. And yeah, the Wii, yep. the Wii itself, yeah, that was a that was a cultural phenomenon. And the Switch, I wouldn't say is a cultural phenomenon, but it is a gamer phenomenon. Like mm-hmm. gamers have suddenly like remembered like I said earlier, Nintendo weathered the storm of, yeah, that's a kitty council. No one really talks about that anymore. No one says it's a kitty council. You notice that? Now it's, that was the council I played as a kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's kind of how what Disney did. Disney sucked for like the 70s and 80s, but then suddenly Little Mermaid came out and it was like, boom, I love animated films. And then Lion King, well, it was, Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, then Lion King. But it was just... Huh? Aladdin. Aladdin. Oh, I forgot Aladdin. Yeah, but then suddenly it was like, I'm a Disney fan again, all of a sudden. And Disney has, like... Disney took the ball and ran (laughs) with it. Now they own half the world. Um, And it's just... Nintendo is definitely the best publisher out there. I... I, like who would be the second best publisher? Can can anybody think of the second best publisher out there? <laughs> like who would come be... close to Nintendo? I don't Anyone? even think I'd be able to. Name In that. terms of just of of sheer power, I mean, you got to think of like EA or something. Yeah. Okay, but that's yeah. they're or, but... they're based on they're based on like microtransactions. And... Right, right. Well, I, that's what I wanted you to specify. You're talking about sheer, just like real estate and power, or you're talking about like actual like. Quality interesting, game. interesting, fun franchises. Interesting, fun franchises. Would it be Bethesda? Would they be the next one? I don't know. Well, Bethesda's picked up. I mean, Bethesda's though. They they've done theirs through acquisition. I mean, I, yeah, I would think Blizzard, Blizzard man. So. Blizzard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you've, you're kind of covering everything. You're, you're, you've got Elder. I almost said Elder Scrolls. <laughs> you know, like Diablo. Starcraft. You've got War, World of Warcraft. You've got Diablo overwatch i mean it seems like you know if you talk to 10 different people chances are they're gonna have a favorite blizzard game but it's gonna be different so so that means activision is our (laughs) number two (laughs) yeah as long as activision is there yes yeah that was just me wondering but yeah nintendo i can't like they and Mario alone has been in pretty much every every uh, genre. I think the only genre he hasn't been in yet is Battle Royale. <laughs> yeah. yeah but, uh, Although I'm not going to rule out somebody making a Battle Royale style map in Mario Maker 2. <laughs> well, that Somehow. Would cool. That would be cool. <laughs> somebody actually made a... Um, a uh, it was like a mod or like a hack of a battle Royale for Mario. And I never played it. It, it seemed all right. It was just kind of weird. That, mm-hmm. But there's one other thing. There's a level that I was playing in my live stream yesterday that somebody dropped the code. I'm like, all right, I'll try it. He said, this is frustrating. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I'll give it a try. It was a platform on a track that was going through these saw blades, and you. it was one of the level wind conditions where you could not jump and land. And it was unbelievably hard. <laughs> Did you ever oh my beat God. it? No, I got like a couple seconds into it where I just kept screwing up. <laughs> And the other thing that I wanted to bring up, I don't know if you had another topic thing. The the kind of like I'm gonna use the word hate going on Game Freak for not including like the entire whatever mm. kind Yeah, let's talk about that. On. That's a great topic. So Bandana say, say like it again. I think I <laughs> wait, what? In in my opinion about that, there had to be a point where they just couldn't fit it all. People are saying, oh, Game Freak is notorious for messing this stuff up whatever they've just had to be a point where they could not fit every single pokemon there's like a couple thousand at this point isn't there i don't think there's a couple thousand unless you're like including thousand, sh- i think yeah there's thousand, some, yeah. it's over a thousand i know but it's they, gotta be they're also having to render these in hd for the first exactly. time exactly and animate them so yeah. i like whether they're using the old sprite oh the old sound sprites the um the old animations for the attacks whatever there just had to be a point where there could not be every single one. And it looks like it, they actually started from scratch for the uh, for the starter Pokemon for this generation. They actually scrapped their animations, their models, everything, and they started over from the initial 
reveal trailer back in April, I think. Yeah. And but I'm... in like it's just going on like I don't care if there's like I, I will always love like Gengar and the gas Ghastly and Haunter and all that stuff and the old OGs, but I want them to keep going and make new stuff. If we all stick to the old stuff, it's never gonna change. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We and... wouldn't be getting the game this year if they did that. Huh? Yeah. We wouldn't be getting the Pokemon this year. Oh yeah. They... Exactly. And I like that the, there's a ghost gym leader. I can't wait to play that. but it's an important thing to point out it's uh version specific yep if you get sword you get to play the fighting the really cool fighting gym leader that 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 kind of sold me on getting sword now and then if you get shield you get to play alistair which is the ghost kind of like droopy one that's the funny thing is I originally wanted sword. Now I want shield. And now <laughs> I, why do you want Bay? Because Bay is the fighter. Why did why did the fighting one sell you on sword? Uh, just character design. I think that it's uh, I, that I'm just that is between both. I think it would be more. She's kind of has like a more spunky personality. Uh, versus I'm not really a fan of like the 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 ghost gym leader just because. I mean, if you stack both both together, I mean, it just falls short of one another. So I'm just that's... hating on emo kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all, man. Uh, I, I said something. I wasn't sure if I was going to get any hate on it, but I threw out a comment on one of my videos. I'm like, not going to lie. I was like, Ken, come on. <laughs> it's, it's, hey, if anything, it reminds me of uh, Psycho Mantis from Metal Gear Solid Five. I where, love that character. Where she was a ki- where she was a kid, right? Or he? She? It's a guy. I'm pretty sure. Okay. I still Devin, love are that, you, that. Are you emo? Are you an emo kid? <laughs> oh my god. We Formally. all had a phase, I'm sure. Formally. Right? <laughs> Formally. <laughs> had a scene phase. Yeah. You were an emo kid too, uh? Where you all like? Did you I had have, a like, scene phase. I didn't have an emo phase. So okay, you had a but what you phase? Still listen to the metal music that I do, so you still got a little bit in you. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of emo friends, but like, so I like I know the scene and stuff, but I was never like I would just talk to them and be like, "Don't you have anything positive to say?" <laughs> That's so weird. Like I was, I was like able to like, I was able to like travel all the tribes of the um of my high school and say the things, say like the weirdest things to everybody but i had no like true friend either though like i never hung out with anybody after school but in school like i could travel among many tribes (laughs) and get away with stuff (laughs) were you that obsessed with zelda back in that day (laughs) i liked zelda a lot i didn't get obsessed with zelda until my horse and me (laughs) okay yeah i still need to watch your video for that one (laughs) yeah that game huh I got to go. Got to run. Oh, no. Bandana, we yeah. knew Bandana Gamer had to go. I forgot to mention it. Thank you so much for joining us. Guys. Thank you. Um, good seeing you, man. Yeah, thank good you for nice joining you, us. John. Everybody, you, check out his channel. Thank see you later, you Bandana Gamer. I'll check out later. All right. See you, man. All right. I forgot to tell everybody that he had to leave. He was probably – he's such a nice guy that he probably didn't want to – like he was probably waiting for his, his – in like his in. And here I am making fun of goth kids and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's like what do I do? Mean. <laughs> no, I the goth kids were like they were the they the goth kids though. I'll tell you what, they have the best taste in like fantasy films. They got me into like Dark Crystal and stuff like that. Which um, I can't wait for that to come back on Netflix. That yeah. looks so good. So I'll I have to... I, I want to see if that does well, but I want to see them redo or not redo, like revisit the labyrinth as well. I'm yeah, about to say labyrinth. Yep. And I'm I'm thinking of getting the the game for, that is coming on the Switch only because I'm a really big fan of turn based strategy games. But I'm waiting though because I don't want to like I don't want to ruin my palate for Fire Emblem because Fire Emblem is such a hard game that no turn based strategy games until Fire Emblem because that's only two weeks away. Mm. And I'm 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 gonna pick it up. It's gonna be my first full fledged title. It's hard, dude. It's hard. And the characters, they die. They die forever. Permadeath, yeah. Yeah, permadeath. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely probably... I'm not going to get that, though. I'm just not not as into it as you can. (laughs) Yeah, I would say... Look at reviews of it and stuff. And see if it's... uh, If it fits your 
fits your mold at that point because it, or watch gameplay because like i said the stuff that we're seeing is awesome footage but it's the cutscenes, and i don't want people walking i don't want people like it'll be like if people do a mario party on it where like RGT85 suddenly <laughs> says, oh, this game sucks because the first player mode, the single player mode sucks. I will get mad. I will straight up be like, that is not what this game is about. And if people yeah. are going to be like, I don't want them to be judging it on the cutscenes. But on the flip side, it might be Nintendo's fault. Nintendo's only been really showing the cutscenes. So I might not get as mad. But if they... if if people start doing a Mario party and start bashing it because the first player game, the single player game sucks. It's like, it's a party game, Mario party party. You know what I mean? Yeah. But again, whenever I've seen fire emblem, I've barely seen any of the actual gameplay except for on the tree house. I think they did tree house gameplay. I think it's going to be okay, man. By the end of the day, but at the end of the, uh, when it's all said and done, I think fire emblem is going to prevail. Cause it always, it always manages to just sell so much, man. I mean, I can't. Well, I wasn't Japan. able. I'm sorry. In Japan, it does. Yeah. In the U.S., man. I mean, Fire Emblem's big, dude. I just don't see it. No one ever talks to me about it. Like, I, I, I never I, hear I, anyone talking to me about it unless it's too many characters in Smash. <laughs> no, man. Think about the the every anime convention. Fire Emblem is huge, man. The, yeah. it's, it's it's you gotta really. Sure, you got to look a little bit in there, but I mean, you wouldn't think of it either. If someone, if you were to ask like the casual person, you wouldn't think about Animal Crossing being huge, but Animal Crossing is big, man. Animal Crossing is is a game that is huge. And and some people don't play games for like my friend, bartender, like seven years ago. Sorry, uh, when Wild World came out, uh, or New, New the Leaf. one on the Wii. Not, not New Leaf, the one on the Wii. Oh, uh, City Life. City Life. Yeah. My friend had not played video games since the one on the GameCube came out. And only came out of the woodworks for that one. Bought a <laughs> Wii, bought everything. I mean, you've got those people that just that just come out and play it. So Dude, I'll tell you, I've been like just stressed out lately and gosh, would I what I wouldn't give to just play three hours of Animal Crossing. Yeah. yeah. You yeah, know what I mean? Three hours of Animal Crossing. I'm gonna like I'll I'll stop going to therapy once Animal Crossing comes out. But until then, I, <laughs> I just miss being able like me and my friends used to boot up the GameCube and play that for hours on end. Yeah, I would I would wake up. I, I would have like, <clears throat> I would wake up in the middle of the night as like a fourth grader, or fifth grader, and I couldn't sleep. And I would play at three in the morning in the town, and the music changes. It's like a lot slower, a little bit more somber like. Yeah. And that's what I, that's what I liked about it because there's things that you didn't it. if you didn't play it at night you yeah know they were there you never got the fish that came out at three in the morning if it was pouring down I mean or or the ghosts or the, the ghosts I think or the, the bugs. crazy red crazy red would show up at night crazy somewhere. red the black market stuff I mean <laughs> black market <laughs> literally his tent <laughs> he would go in there he's like I'm not saying it's a black market but you know I'm not gonna rule it out either. But that's that's the I really hope that they add that type of stuff back into the new Animal Crossing. And I want to see. No one knows what I'm talking about when I say this, but the character named Blanca, Blanca. or it, the Spanish word for white. See, you guys are confused too. Are you talking about it, the chihuahua, the white one? She was a cat in the game in the first game. That I think she would come up to you on the train sometimes, and she had no face, and you would have to draw her face on. What? Um, I, don't I don't know who that is. Yeah, I'm dude, that not was even a nightmare kidding. you were Look having. It up. You were Look having a nightmare, and <laughs> you're is this a Mandela effect? No, I'm telling you. Look it up. I'm telling <laughs> I'm you, it's real. Up. You had to draw her face. Yes, I'm telling. Hold, I got it. That it's is so like a, not right. It's no. kind of like a mimic you thing, you know, where it's uh, uh, it's it, it's it's kind of part of like Hawaiian folklore. Wait a second. Wait a sec. We got confirmation. EPS five thousand says he remembers Blanca. Mm -hmm. My boy. <laughs> I, See, I told right you. Too. There is a wiki page too. All right. Oh wait, but she was on 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 the GameCube one. 
yeah, I forget where she would show up, but she Whoa. would show up, and I'm pretty sure I remember it being on the train because the when you started up the game, Rover would be there. Rover. And then there was some times where Blanca would show up, and then she would ask you to draw on her face. And then it would actually show up in the game when she was in, in your town. Did, oh, so it was whenever you you were creating your game for the first time. There was I a think like it, I don't know if you could see her. You could see it right there. She was a cat. Oh, draw on her face. I thought you said she had no face. She doesn't no, have a face. It's a blank face right there, and you could draw it. That's freaky. Anything. That is like that is like an there's animal. even there's even an amiibo card for her. There is. I see it. Oh my gosh, she has no face. I I know that's what I'm saying. And that's one of the um that's one of the screenshots from being able to draw on her face. Now, how did she come up how did she come about just by chance? You would I can't remember how you would get to her, but it would just show up. Like this this is the creepy stuff that me and my friends used to do. Just draw the most disturbing face we could possibly think of. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's just funny, dude. <laughs> Did you did you have control? See, this is what I was talking about. Look, it, she, she would show up on the train. How so would you draw I've got some confirmation here. So, in Animal Forest, that's the N64 version. In Animal Crossing, she would randomly appear when visiting other towns. That's oh. what I couldn't remember why. She has no face and will ask the player to draw them a new one. <laughs> if the player meets Blanca again, they may have a different face from the one the player had drawn after the player has met Blanca and drawn has drawn on their face. They may appear in the player's town as a visitor. You're right, dude. But what would you that's do? the weird stuff that I really, really hope they're going to add in. What would you back. do in real life? If somebody without a face came to you and said, would you draw me my face? I mean, I would leave, dude. <laughs> yeah, I would probably leave. Like, nah. <laughs> Thanks, dude. I'm good. <laughs> you think I'm going to sit there and draw on their face and be like, that's pretty. And you just sit there and just not do anything? I don't know. I might do it. <laughs> Supernatural freaks me out, man. So I grew up, I'm Mexican. So the, the, Chris, you can confirm, right? Yeah. We need confirmation, Chris. Um, <laughs> EPS 5000, uh, he said that. Uh, you get ten dollars uh, credit from Best Buy if you order like sword and or shield, but if you buy the dual pack, you only get one ten dollar credit. So if you are like really hardcore and you don't, but you don't mind not having the dual pack sleeve, then you can get um, you can get uh, twenty dollars basically instead of. Instead of ten dollars, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, um, valid. I'm probably just gonna buy the dual pack. I really want that Alistair character to play. Again. And that, yeah, that's the thing is that they 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 separate it now. They have certain gym leaders. Watch, they're gonna announce another gym leader that is only on shields, and I want to fight that person. And to be honest, like, have they ever done a ghost type um, gym leader? That's the thing that's intriguing me. I'm pretty sure black and white has something, but I mean, it's it's few and far between. I mean, but when, like when it comes to playing the the Pokemon games and like the card games, I love Ghost type and I love Dark type. They're always my favorite, so that's why I'm going for that one personally. Who's your favorite Pokemon? In general, I would have to either uh, well, it would be Yebeltal. Who? The Y. The, the Y shaped one, y. Yebeltal. Why? I don't know how to I don't know how to pronounce the name right. I've always called it Yevelto. No, no, no. I mean, why is it your favorite? <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Well, um, I just like his um his coloration a lot because it's black and red. They're my favorite colors. I like him him as a Pokemon card because that was one of the first ones of the EX cards that I got. Uh huh. And I actually ended up building entire decks around him. Gotcha. Oh, dude, you're uh you're in for a treat. Uh, Pokemon Ghost type, Pokemon. Oh, these are trainers, though. Famous trainers. Uh, the fourth gym, gym leader of Johto, Phoebe. Yeah. Um, Agatha, there's an Agatha that dates all the way back to Kanto. Um, oh, wow. Um, Maybe Mark. I'm just not remembering it, but this is the first one that's really strike strikes me because it he the the guy himself even looks like a ghost book there's only yeah. there's only seven there's only six or seven over the span of every mainline game so it's not a lot but it's it's something 
Yes. And I like I when replaying through Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, that really just revamped why I like the ghost Pokemon for the going into that tower and seeing that gut wrenching scene between the Cubone. They confirmed that there was an evolutionary form for Cubone that looked like Kangaskhan. Yeah. And it has the Cubone skull that he's wearing. Mm-hmm. I got a question about Cubone. Cubone is wearing the skull of his mother, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, so does that mean that the mother only has one child? Because if, like, with the children then, if there were, like, multiple children, who would get to wear the skull of the mother? Probably the oldest. But then why don't we ever see any younger siblings without skulls? That's a valid point. I don't know. So <laughs> that might be diving a little too deep there again. Really fiction, right? <laughs> But I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like, or do they just hide then? Like, and, and where are the dads? <laughs> where are the dad cue bones? <laughs> You're asking the real questions here, man. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. the, the backstories behind certain Pokemon scare me. Like the backstory behind Drifloon, it will attract poke, um, the children. children to grab onto the string and they'll just float away <laughs> and, and disappear. I'm not kidding. This is on the Pokemon card. I'm yeah. not even joking. I think Rotom <laughs> has a w- weird one too. There are some of them that are really disturbing. Just float away. <laughs> Tell, yes. Do me a favor. If you can find these really disturbing ones, I'll do a whole video on them. Okay. Because... I, I, I would have to look up the, um, the flavor text on the cards. I'm actually I'm actually thinking of getting into the the card game with my kids. So the card like, game like, is so much fun, and it's really easy for kids to understand. And although it has like the hard type, the uh, um, where you have to be, it's kind of complex to get into at the same time. Yeah, I've been kind of learning. Maybe maybe you and I can play a game on on uh, Google Hangouts one day. Dude, I would love it. <laughs> I haven't played Pokemon like the card game in a while. I've got a good I've got a good chunk of uh, of entries here that are considered 15 most disturbing pokedex entries in the world i can read some off if you yeah want. do them do them okay so it's loading so you guys can talk <laughs> <laughs> we're all like we leading in all prepared all right i'm pretty sure the flavor text from the cards are also the same thing but go on uh okay here we go is it still uh, loading I'm, it's it's loading, but I'm trying to see if this is like even real. <laughs> All Abras are horribly deformed human children. This can't be real, man. No, okay, well, no here's hor- one that I do remember. You know, you know, Spoink. Spoink. The pig. The the pig with the bouncy tail that just always bouncing. Yeah. If it stops bouncing, it its heart will stop. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Uh, That's th- enough. This is for uh, that that. Lampant it evolves into sh- Shan, um, the Chandelure. Chandelure. It says the spirits it absorbs fuel its baleful mm-hmm. fire. It hangs around hospitals waiting for people to pass on. Holy crap! Now this is the one that I was talking about. So it just wait, the... it just waits for people to like die so it can like take their spirit and and com- and continue to fuel its fire. Nice. Like, this okay. is the Driftloon card that I was talking about. The, the flavor text says this po- these Pokemon are called signposts for wandering spirits. Children holding them sometimes vanish. <laughs> <laughs> so that's really messed up. What? <laughs> and that's right on the Pokemon card. I used to have the card. Okay, I've got, I've got, I've got some official ones here. Okay. Okay. There's a Pokemon Jeez. called Yamask. Oh, yeah. Yamask is another one that's really, really weird. Yeah, it holds this. It's this ghost Pokemon that holds this like Aztec looking mask. And it says each of them carries a mask that is used to be that it used to be a face when it was human. Sometimes they look at it and cry. <laughs> like Hannibal Lecter, dude. Sometimes a, they look at an, it and cry. There's an evolved form of that. I think it's that specific one called Cofagrigus. And um, <laughs> it's got an e- a equally messed up one. Yeah, Drifloon is one of these, by the way. It says that it holds up, uh, uh, let's see, wandering spirits, children hold them up and sometimes disappear. Yeah. And, um, it will hold up the mask and sometimes looking at it and cry. Yeah, Gorbis. It's an eel that looks kind of pink, or it is pink. 
And it says, even though it is pictured very elegantly and, and beautiful, it is very cruel. When it spots its prey, this Pokemon is, inserts itself into the prey's body and drains the prey, drains the prey of its body fluids. <laughs> <laughs> I like how they say, even though it looks nice, it's really cruel. Yeah. Now, so there's another one, the the one that I was talking about, Cofagrigus. I don't know how to say the name properly, but whatever. It says grave robbers who mistake them for real coffins get too close and end up trapped inside their bodies. Ooh. <laughs> wow, Haunter, dude. Haunter has some. Have you? Do you know the Haunters, Devin? Um, I, I don't remember reading any flavor text on a Haunter card. Hey, said... I gotta mention, Calf says, mm, maybe we should stop the bouncing pig. Mm, bacon. Gotta, gotta shout out the bacon. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, it says its tongue is made of gas. If it if licked, its victim starts shaking constantly until death eventually comes. <laughs> and this is the Pokedex entry from Silver, two thousand and zero, two thousand. Yeah. Now these yeah. are these are just for the card game and not the actual. No, the it's ones he's game. reading, the, the the ones he's reading are from the Pokedex. The ones I'm reading are from the cards. Yeah. The, there's the Haunter card that I just looked up. It says, it strikes at humans from total darkness. Those licked by its cold tongue grow weaker with each passing day until they die. <laughs> 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 these are real, man. Uh, and aren't these, like, and these Pokemon make it into the anime, too, so. <laughs> yeah. Banette. She's like a, like a, um, a voodoo Pokemon. And it says, an, ab an abandoned plush doll became this Pokemon. They are said to live in garbage dumps and wander about in search of the children that threw them away. Oh, Emerald. gosh. This is from Pokemon Emerald. That's like the opposite of Toy Story. This is like Child's Play. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Dusclops. Um, I don't care what anybody says. I like Garbodor. Garbodor. Which one's Garbodor? The garbage he looks like a big bag of garbage with oh yeah death, i saw that one actually in the, i saw that one in in the actual anime um, and it, it's consuming garbage makes new kinds of poison gases liquids inside their bodies oh man look at phantom it's like a it's like a ghost and grass pokemon according to old tales these pokemon are stumps possessed by the spirits of children who have died while lost in the forest what yeah. This and stuff this is from, weird. This is that's one. Of, we should probably stop now because if you want to do a video, there's so many. I'm oh, Evetal, your boy's on here. Okay, okay do go, one more. Go what on with it? that one. I kind of want to hear this. <laughs> when its life comes to an end, it absorbs the life energy of every living thing and turns into a cocoon once more. So it's like a phoenix Pokemon, essentially. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, it absorbs. <laughs> And I'm not, I don't know if I'm quoting this right and throw this out to the chat, though. Um, Giratina is basically the Pokemon devil. Yeah, yeah, that is that is something that I've heard and that I've recently found that out, actually, which is kind of weird. Is there only one or is there many? Well, that, those are the legendaries. Like, there's only one Lugia and all yeah, that okay. stuff within the games and the anime. Same thing with Absol. What not makes... Absol, um, um, the god Pokemon, right? Um, or it's the God Arceus. Of Arceus. Arceus. That one, it's like, so is Arceus the best Pokemon of all time? Or that's what I don't get. No, I don't know. How do, um, what's, oh crap, I forgot the, well, I was going to say. Oh, yeah. What makes a legendary a legendary? Because there are legend, there's like five, four, three legendary and the first game plus Mewtwo and Mew. So like, but those, but those aren't legendaries. Like what's a legendary, what makes a legendary, a legendary. David, go on with that one. <laughs> um, uh, are you referring to like within the game, like lore wise, or are you talking about like the characteristics of catching the Pokemon? Uh, I don't know, just anything really, because like, why is Zapboys a legendary and not just a Pokemon? Talking about Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres. Yeah. I mean, I think that it kind of entices the players to go to these places, like the power plant, or on top of the the ice mountain, because they know that it's like 
it kind of just comes down to collecting. You're collecting kind of mediocre Pokemon for majority of the game, and then you get rare Pokemon and Pokemon that only spawn in this area, and then you get legendaries that are like very powerful. Um, there's only one of them in the game. So I guess there's like this appeal to them where it's like there's not many of them. Uh-huh. True. So, um, sorry, a little honorable mention here for uh, Pokedex entries. Drowsy. It's the pig Pokemon that's like, uh, does hypnosis. Yep. It remembers every dream it eats. It rarely eats the dreams of adults because children's are much tastier. <laughs> and this is from Pokemon Silver. I played this game as a kid. I and need you to, definitely need to do a video on this. Look yeah. it up, and you'll see how much how weird they get. Yeah, I'll do it with my I'll do it with my wife actually, so she can like because this surprises me. Like I'm just like, what the heck is this? Oh, okay. yeah. Calf. Sorry, man. I didn't I didn't read the latest post that you did. I'll look it up. Uh, let's see. But yeah, um, you have to get my I have to get we have to share contact info because whenever you're able to play, I can't, and then when I want to play, I you're not so. Uh, he wants to play Smash with me. Calf was Calf was on fire last night. He was Dude, like, I, I, I'm still blown away by watching him play the Me Sword Fighter and doing great. Yeah, that's a, that's like a player that no one picks just because it's the exactly. Fighter. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I you're the first one that I've seen competitive play DDD and whip butt. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Thank you. Uh, let's see. I'm you're gonna be coming up. back to Friday Night Smash. Are you trying to? Are you trying to train to get that belt when you come back? You know, I don't know. I don't even know if it's in my sights. To be honest, man, I because feel like, not, like not good the enough. people, the people that have that have that I've played with in the past two three weeks, like I don't even know if the belt will be sufficient to like satiate what I'm what I'm feeling right now. I feel like I just have to like go and get like a real WWE belt now at these these tournaments near me you know <laughs> so have you been doing sure. tournaments i went and uh played at um a couple cider cades um in the last two weeks yeah but I, I um i mean there's a lot of good people man i didn't i didn't make it past the uh the polls so i didn't place so but it's did fun beat, it's a lot did, of fun man did you beat anybody yeah yeah a handful of people and then, did you have you met any? Is it like Fight Club or anything? Like how how are these places? How is no, a Smash man. tournament? What is a Smash tournament like? So the the one that they really advertise here in Dallas is called Cidercade, and it's it's inside of an arcade that serves alcohol, and uh, yeah. it's they're the they're pretty much they entice you to come so that you can spend money you know on drinks and food right but they offer free pizza and it's single elimination so you're playing only one set you're not even you're not you're not playing three games out of five you're playing just one game because it, it would take forever it would take right. forever so 1v1 1v1 no items final destination battlefield only um, on smash um ultimate on smash ultimate uh yeah i mean your typical your typical rules for competitive play so it's pretty it's pretty fun i I mean i'm eventually obviously i'm gonna play friday night smash again but just that's more of a leisurely route you know because you know sometimes we'll do like custom stages or we'll do sometimes there'll be items or whatever but this is like the real deal man how many people usually show up i've never been to a tournament so i'm just interested into knowing about it that's gotta be like over 100 people man 100 people (laughs) Mm-hmm. So how long does it take you to be in between battles? Uh, so your typical match is seven minutes with four lives. Sometimes you die before the seven minutes are up. Sometimes it goes to seven minutes and you just go to either sudden death or whoever has the most lives on the board. Okay, and then and then you win. When do you, what, how long does it take for you to get to play again? Um, if you win. Well, it depends. If you're in pools, then it's probably like maybe like 20 minutes. 20 minutes, okay. Mm-hmm. And if there's like 100 people, so that's like it got to whittle. It has to whittle down stuff. How many people have you been beating before you get knocked out? I think I make it four or five, and then then it's just you eventually meet someone who's like super good. It's like a, the 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 curve is like. 
it's it kind of rises up and, and then there's like a huge spike so okay. you'll be doing good you'll be winning matches it'll be super easy and then you just come across this guy who's like super try hard and it's like yeah this guy's you guys this guy plays eight hours a day so <laughs> yeah yeah very true have you asked any of them to help train you no i'm a pretty prideful person when it comes to something like that so i kind of want to figure it out on my own uh-huh. i don't want someone to be like hey dude uh man you're awesome can i be your protege that's kind of it's weird so <laughs> for me it's like i if i'm gonna take tips from someone it'll be someone that i don't know or someone that's like like I'll play with my cousin. My cousin and I are like in the same level, so we'll like trade off wins. Gotcha. He'll win some, I'll win some, and we're like each other's like training sparring part partners. But True. is the argument though that you would st- that you would never get better though? You would always be if you're always fighting the same person. Well, that's the thing is that recently I took it upon myself to like jump online, get some smash tags, uh, try to get some players on the elite. Because uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the elite on Smash, like. If you have a player on Elite Smash, your character icon for that that person that you use or the character that you use lights up, and so you're able to pick that person. Does have that make sense? Any- so like, the board is essentially all grayed out, and slowly you're making these characters light up because you're you're getting better and better at them. Have you beaten mm. any uh, Elite players online? Yeah. Some of them they're really easy to cheese. I don't cheese them, but you know sometimes they'll like fall off and you know, <laughs> it happens. Human error. Wait, when you say cheese them, what do you mean? Like, uh, like a sudden death. Like, uh, sorry, like a self destruct. You're playing a guy who's really good with Captain Falcon, like Calf, for instance. Uh huh. Not Calf, uh, Taylor. And then uh, you're getting down to the wire. You have one life, one life, and then he accidentally just falls off the stage. And there you go. You've got a smash tag. So. You should have seen Ken last night. He was playing Peach. (laughs) Dude, okay, so um, they were on the pilot wing stage. I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, I think it was Taylor on the bottom wing as Captain – I almost said Captain America. Captain Falcon. Ken was on the top as Peach, and he pulled out the bomb on. And they were both taunting each other by, like, dancing around, doing something silly of, like, (laughs) Ken, you have a bomb in your hand. Ken, you have a bomb in your hand, and just – Boom. <laughs> yeah, I just kept taunting until the bomb blew up. He and Taylor totally goaded me into it. He taunted me, so I taunted him back. And I was just yeah, I can do this all day. But I had a bomb in my hand, and so I I couldn't do it all day. I think it's like a one in one hundred chance of her pulling out a bomb. Whatever it was, it, it cost me the game because we yeah. were already like neck and neck. And then after that, the bomb blew up, and then I could never like he could. I mean. He could have still beat me without that happening, but I was never able to recover with that happening. Like, I was a total dummy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was your last stock anyway. It's 1 in 100 to pull out a bomb and 1 in 150 to pull out a beam sword. I've never pulled out a beam sword. Never, ever. I think there's a chance to pull out every item in the game, but it's like it gets exponentially harder to do. No, I've only pulled out bombs and turnips Mm -hmm. and uh, Mr. Saturn. Mm-hmm. Hey, Veronica David. Hello. How are you? Wave Purple Heart. Uh, Calf, I don't think I got your email or anything. Man. You might want to reset it. I put my email as a comment so you could just like email me. And whenever you want to play Smash, just uh, text me or find me on Instagram or something, and, and, and I'll see if I can make something work. And Devin, you've been doing a lot of streams lately. Why don't you uh, plug your channel some? Well, yeah, um, my – as my name says, my uh, channel's Rat Boy Collectibles. I normally have been doing videos about toy collecting and random stuff like that. I just got myself an Elgato crap capture, sorry, capture card. Crap so card. So I started, yeah, I lost how to speak. Uh, so I started doing streams of Mario Maker so far. I've been doing um, viewer submitted levels and just having a lot of fun so far. I'm going to be doing other streams of, of other games soon coming up. And when do you think you'll be doing them? I've been doing like three just this week because I've been really having fun with it, but I'm probably going to try to schedule it on either Tuesdays or Thursdays. Tuesdays or Thursdays. All right, cool. Yeah. And um, will you still be doing toy review things or is that going to be kind of falling well, to the wayside? No, well, definitely. Yeah. Just, I haven't really been picking up anything lately. Gotcha. Gotcha. And, um, and what else has been going on in the world of David? Huh, David? 
Uh, to be honest, man, I've been working a lot. Um, so it's good to just kind of jump on here for a couple hours and, you know, de-stress and talk about games. How about Mar? How about Marvel Alliance? Are you gonna you gonna pl- pick that up? Because that's next week. Oh my god, I forgot about that game. Yeah, um, I'm 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 really. Um, let's see what we got here. I've got a Mario Maker and um, playing that, and then um, um, lost my train of thought here. Fire Emblem. That's gonna be the next one that I'm gonna do. Okay, so you're gonna bypass. Bypass Marvel Alliance to go right to Fire Emblem. Yeah, I mean, just because it didn't really grab my attention at E3. Gotcha. Yep, we yeah. uh, we actually got to play a little bit, and it's pretty much exactly like the other ones. I'm not saying that as a bad thing. I mean, I think that's what people want. If they change the formula, it will be like, I think detrimental. What about you, Devin? Are you like big rat boy into Marvel Alliance three? Well, yeah, I've always liked Marvel. Uh, I like Marvel everything. I had look, look at the tattoo, for God's sake. But, um, yeah, I actually forgot it was coming out this week. Yeah, I'm definitely going to get that game. Like, yeah, if I know you guys here at the – here, you know, doing some coach, uh, some couch co-op, which I feel like is the optimal way to play that game, I would play it and we can run through it in, like, a day. That would be awesome. That would be cool. But I feel like it would probably, like, fatigue me on my end just because – I mean, I, I do like an hour or two and then I just be like, I either want to play something else or, or I just get burnt out fast. But I love couch co That's that's like the epitome couch co-op game. I think you and I were playing it and we were just like, it's just your classic, classic beat em up. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's, it was a nostalgic thing for me. Me and my brother used to play it a lot. The old two. Yeah. That's nice, man. That's. You think you'll get, you think you'll get your fiance to play with you? Does she, I know she plays every once in a while. I think she'll play uh, some couch co-op. Probably. <laughs> I don't doubt it. I'm going to see if I can get my whole family. I'm, I'm thinking of buying it. My my son is four, and he, he can kind of play video games now. So, like, I'm thinking all four of us can play, and he can, you know, just suck and, you know, be Give in the him corner. the tanker character. Give huh? him, like, a Hulk. Or give, give him, him like Hulk a Hulk Deadpool. <laughs> yeah, give him like a Colossus or something that he can just like clear people. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. You I'll don't just... need him like pull switches or like go to certain like points in the map. Just have him like beat up stuff. But this will be like the first time that I can play with my entire family because he's old enough to play a game and this game isn't, you know, it's not hard. You just move around and punch buttons and whatnot. Right. So, it not it weird? Like, you forgot about this game. Could you imagine if this game was on the Wii U, it would have been a, a huge get. And it's just weird. Like, even Mario Maker wasn't really, like, after that Direct, they kind of just, whatever. And it just seems like... It's not even the fact that I forgot about the game. It's, it's existence. I just forgot it was coming out this week. Well, I've that's the very thing. Nintendo just doesn't seem to be it. pushing it anymore they like we pushed it a while ago it's like you will remember nintendo's like just like you're gonna get it you know you are <laughs> yeah <laughs> like no Dragon de- I, I was definitely gonna get it from the moment i heard about it and then hearing all the salty fans of other co- uh, consoles saying why is it a nintendo exclusive man why aren't we getting it like come on i love uh, salty fans like i drink their things, tears uh, calf you may have been gone when i said i didn't get your email i left my email in the comment that i replied to and you're that you commented on my video um and then two ken um, hey uh your mom's going to go visit kelly and john right so it's their turn tomorrow so oh, a month well, later make sure hey uh david's mom i want you to get a real review of my food that i cooked i cooked a, a dish called gang kawan uh what the, what does that mean gang is um i think gang is chicken uh, I don't know. It's a Thai dish, and I made it. And uh, you know, when you're with people, they're gonna have to tell you, "Oh yeah, this was great." So I'll get me a real review on what they said, and then come back and report. <laughs> she could be, she's that they're. I, I know John and Kelly are excited because they're gonna get to have my mom's food all week. Oh, mm-hmm. you can come and visit Houston anytime you want. Also, just <laughs> oh, uh, she's called Blanche in English, uh, Devin. What? The uh the no faced uh cat. Blanche. Really? I've only ever heard her called Blanca. That's it. 
Oh, wait, 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 wait. Blanche is an ostrich. Never mind. <laughs> oh, okay. I was going to say. Bl- potato, Blanca potato. Is, uh, potato, other, potato. Other than Blanca from Street Fighter. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I always uh, um, related those two because that was always my favorite Street Fighter character. Very neat Easter egg in Smash Brothers. If you play Ryu or Ken storyline, you play characters that are reminiscent of the original arcade uh story uh story mode from um street fighter 2 oh, so you'll really? go through like um you'll 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 play donkey kong with like a green fur to <laughs> oh to, to blanca. blanca or That's you'll great. do um you'll do uh meta knight to represent vega because of the oh, mask oh yeah yeah that yeah the funny. mask and and what's just to think how the miracle that smash brothers is they have every single song from the arcade for every fighter. Vega, Blanca, Zangief. Oh, I love the I loved Vega's music. Vega's music is so awesome. And they re and they redid it with uh, Yoko Shimamura, who, for those of you who don't know, Yoko is an amazing she she's a Japanese composer for uh, Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts, but she redid Vega's theme. You need to listen to that, Ken. Really? Can I give yeah. you the? I can I gave you the video for the um the remixes for Smash Brothers soundtrack that you're like, is this real? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's real, and it's it needs to <laughs> be listened awesome. to. They're awesome. They're absolutely awesome. The they're Zelda cool. ones are great. They did a uh, not Rivali's theme, but the uh, the the bird that does the accordion. Yeah, that's so good. David, this is just a random thing. I'm looking at your background, seeing the um, the Smash Bros. soundtrack in the back. Mm-hmm. I'm just imagining how many discs they would have to do to put a, uh, a soundtrack for this game. <laughs> <laughs> this is two. This is two discs, so I would think it'd be like four or six. Yeah, I know it would have to be a even bunch. more. <laughs> then you just open it, and there's like a USB in it. Yeah, <laughs> pretty just, much. Just plug it in, <laughs> or here's a download code. Just we're not even gonna bother. Here's <laughs> <laughs> a here's the Metafire zip file here. Yeah. <laughs> I still have that um that uh, soundtrack sealed too. I just need to find it. Actually, I don't yeah, know where it went. Sealed, man, and 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 um uh, uh, someone else, someone asked me the other day if they want if they could have it what um, your soundtrack the soundtrack that's sealed yeah who comes up to you and just says hey can i have that <laughs> well remember remember jr did that newsletter yeah my photo my photo behind me had it and i think someone messaged me about is it is it really even that oh, rare okay. i've been sitting on mine and i don't even have like i don't even care about it it's not rare but it's definitely kind of uncommon you could sell it for 25 bucks for sure um and if you're a smash fan it's like you know to me it's a zelda item and a smash item i collect you know anything zelda so which but i got a question for you guys okay so you guys know at this point I'm a Zelda freak. I just collect Zelda and then things that I play usually. Every once in a while I'll venture out and go something else. I have though I have a sub I have like a couple other things I collect and it would be Princess Peach and Fire Emblem actually. And Princess Peach because of Smash Brothers. Do you guys you guys though seem to have I don't know. Do you have something that you mainly collect? If I was say, what do you mainly collect, or are you guys just all over the place? Devin, Devin I got to look at the wall. <laughs> yeah, Devin, you seem to be all over the place. Is there one thing that you say like above all else? I collect this amiibo i mean that's the one thing that i put my like heart and soul into since they came out okay so amiibos is like your main collection is amiibo like i used to have all my amiibos sitting on the shelf behind me i ended up like i bubble wrapped them all and like protected them they're in a couple storage boxes but i have now uh, besides now that i i kind of i keep forgetting about them this thing and the bowser that i have sitting back here but i can't reach it it's the only um, American amiibos that I'm missing, mm-hmm. and that orange squid still eluding me. That, um, oh, the by dark. Way, I saw the I saw the three pack of the uh, Squid Boy, Squid Girl, and the Green Squid at GameStop today. Well, I had the Green Squid. I need. But I don't know. Squid. I didn't know if that was of any rarity. I just saw it in my. In I my heard no, re- it, it's, it's out there. They're I mean, gonna re-release them. I'm I'm obsessed with these. Like the more of these uh, yarn Yoshi's I can get, the better. Yeah, I've got um, like two, and then one in the box. There, right I'm pretty sure I have like at least four of each color. Yeah. <laughs> Any um, reason why? 
I don't know. I just find them to be very unique, and I just like the fact that they're not like plastic. I think that it's cool that they're plushies. What about Mega Yarn? I have Mega Yarn too, but I only have one of them. I was gonna and Poochie. Poochie is by far one of like the rare amiibos that I've noticed yep. lately. I got Gold Mario just for my birthday like two years ago, just randomly, and now it's like hard to find. So. Yeah, well, Gold Mario sells for a got like a solid 50 sealed yeah i mean no. i've noticed that like even like whoops <laughs> first print uh villager you can, looks i think deformed. you can probably get him for around 30 40 i think i love villager but he looks deformed his head yeah, yeah. well this this but... is the original villager then we go on to five head villager five head villager <laughs> So well, that's what I've called. Heard him called, and I've always coined that because I think it's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> the answer Ken's original question, though, it was for a while was Wii U, just because it seemed the easiest to get into at that time. Yeah, that... it was like it was unsuccessful from Nintendo's part, and so you were seeing these places that were like some game thirty bucks, and I was like, of course. And then all of a sudden, Switch is announced, and it's imminent. I think it was like a five month time frame from announcement to release. And all of a sudden these people just started clearing them out. Oh, and I, yeah. was getting, I was getting shovelware. I was, no one was looking at the, at the Wii U obviously. Yeah. And I was just like landing things like Tokyo Mirage sessions, brand new 1998 or something like that. And I was like, like, yeah, I was doing the same thing with the Wii remotes because around that time, my Walmarts were, um, they're they were clearancing out the Wii remote, so I got like the Mario, uh, not not Mario Toad, uh, the the Toad themed one for like five bucks. Yeah, I have a couple of them sealed in a storage box. Yeah, I was one of the Yoshi and the Bowser one. I have the whole collection open, but I have those sealed. At the moment. Like, I mean, just for example, if you can hear me, but the Brunswick titles, Pro Bowling, and, yep. and like the weird ones, five bucks, man. I would just go and and they'd be in clearance. They wouldn't even be. I think they'd be in the clearance bin. And I was like, are you kidding me? And I would just run through it and I would find titles for like, I, uh, there's, I don't know which one it is. There's one in here for that. that it still has the $3 clearance tag. And nice. I keep that. Three in. bucks. No, isn't bucks. that Tokyo Mirage Sessions the one that I sent you? I thought I sold it to you, but I yeah, can't remember. The special edition, yes. But the okay. I have I have a sealed normal version. So, okay. but thanks to you, um, I, I'm going to get with you soon, but I'm going to have some other ones from you if you still have them but well i haven't sold any of those wii u games that yeah, I've tried, yeah I, I need devil's third and i need some other ones too so okay uh, let me see Are if you, I can, go you guys the entire collection no nah, not really uh, uh no man it, it kind of, like i said when i met you yes last year with uh by the way we need to redo that interview it's coming up here in a week or something oh yeah it's been a, a year already i found it on the 17th of july but we did the interview a few days later. Later, I think so. We should do a, a, a like Steve suggested, do a one year cap. A one year Steve. cap. Yeah, where we uh, just kind of reflect on it and and just kind of hang out or something. But you guys can talk while I look through these because Devin, yes, you yes. also have Luigi though as one of your like mainstays. Is well, Lu yeah, I love the the character of Luigi uh, ever since I first picked up uh, Mario All-Stars and played Mario 2 on that cartridge. Do you have any obsession to get his stuff other than you like it? Is it, but... Uh, not, like, going out of my way to go get, like, every Luigi thing like you do with, like, Zelda or anything. Uh -huh. But if I see a cool Luigi item, I will get it. Like, the, um, I loved the uh, Luigi um steering wheel that the, you gave me for the switch that was fantastic i haven't gotten the chance to actually use it yet but i do love it <laughs> i don't think <laughs> i don't think you'll want to use it i think you'll just want to play it or have it I, when i play mario kart 8 i am way better with the motion controls no than way. I am. In. me too I'm not kidding. me too what I did a contest at uh, this local anime store that unfortunately closed down. They were having a Mario Kart 8 contest. I brought my Switch. I was destroying with motion controls. Wow. No one could touch me. I'm impressed. Um, uh, did you hear that the producers of Luigi's Mansion 3 said that Gooigi probably tastes like coffee? What? <laughs> yeah, you guys didn't hear that? No. Okay. Can you elaborate? 
It's random news of the day. It's like Guiji may or may not taste like coffee. Do they? Gooigi? Nintendo does weird stuff like that. I was like, yeah, that's all. I have mine right behind me, man. I still like, love this little flash. I'm so glad I got the trifecta of of, of collectibles of E3. The weirdest, it, the weirdest tidbit is um, Waluigi is circ- is uncircumcised. It's like, why would you ever tell us that, Nintendo? Nintendo told us that. I st- uh, yeah, I rem- didn't you do a video on that? Yeah, I, I said weird oh, Nintendo right. facts. Okay. Yeah, that that is they're very interesting. But back to what you were saying, like I don't know, I don't think I have anything like specifically Luigi related besides like um just random items. Like I have the Luigi amiibo right here. I have a Mario Kart Eight Luigi. Um, it's like a keychain, uh-huh. but it's almost it's like a almost like a little car. It has the wheels on it. Yeah, yeah. But I don't I don't have anything like specifically Luigi related besides just random items. I see you have a an amiibo game and watch. Did you, did you ever get the cube? Uh, QB, no. That one is so hard. I don't think I'm ever gonna get it. Yeah, you might. Yeah, I might. don't. I prided myself in having every single amiibo, like almost everyone, I should say, when from American releases. I have not paid over retail for any of them. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's. You'll never pay. If QB didn't get something for the um for his newest game, then yeah, you'll have to pay over. Yeah, but at the moment, I just want to complete the American collection, which I'm so close already. I have to find somebody that has the dark versions of these things. I found the uh, the the light version, I'm just going to call it, of Bowser. I need the light version of Donkey Kong, and then the dark versions are the hard ones. I can't find my... Um... I posted it on the Wii U thing, and I got some comments like three months ago. But I found that three dollar game at at Walmart. Uh, I remember sealed. that. Wasn't it like Monster High or something? Yeah, I think so. Uh, but just to run through some like honorable mentions here, so I got Runbow sealed for like nine bucks. I got uh, Brunswick Bowling for fifteen sealed. Ben ten for I don't know if you can see it, but like six fifty nine or something like that. Yeah, eighty six. That's a weird number. Six eighty six. And then I found this at Family Dollar for five bucks. Family Dollar for five bucks, man! Yeah. When you get a video game for five bucks, dude, that's just crazy oh. to me. Yeah. Although those Scribble Not games suck, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> but Link and Zelda actually make a cameo appearance in the first Scribble Knots game on the Wii U. You can actually type in Zelda, and she will appear. Huh. Cool. I didn't know that actually. One of these days, I'm gonna do a cameo, uh, a cameo. We, we do a video of like all the odd cameos that show up in like, like for for instance, the game and watch and that and all that stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I want to. I'm trying to get. You need. You can get. Uh, so on the Wii U, you get um, Game and Watch Gallery Four, and if you get like 240 stars, you can get Zelda. Game and watch, but dude, I'll tell you what, it's so hard to get those stars. I'm only at like 50. I've been trying to <laughs> just so hard. I can't get it. Oh, wow. Look at the time. I think we got two more minutes, guys. Yeah, that's very, very true. So, uh, cl- uh, anything, anything, uh, David to, to kind of close us out with? Um, I think I'm stumped, man. I'm Stump- just, uh, glad to be here. Glad to be here. All right. Devin, are you glad to be here? Oh, yeah. Always, dude. <laughs> <laughs> anything anything to close out or do you want to throw out, out on your channel or whatever? Check out my live streams. I'm going to do a lot more because I've been having a lot of fun. I'm when's probably- wh- when's the next one? When's the next uh, live stream? Uh, Not tomorrow. Maybe Monday, I'm thinking. Monday? Because I actually get it to where I'm going to like schedule it figure out the the streaming process and all that stuff like i have four cases full of games i'm gonna start playing like oh geez i want want some uh examples of what i need to do okay okay cool all right you want to talk calf calf um when you were commenting on my video i replied to one of them and i gave you my email so that you can better contact me um because i'm not sure if i can play tonight but yeah, just just a little little tidbit there. Feel free to email me anytime. All right, 
And that will pretty much do it for this Saturday edition of the podcast. Guys, um, Bandana Gamer, he was on earlier. So, uh, you know, do me a favor. Check out his channel, Bandana Gamer. Then you got Rap Boy Collectibles over here. And then, of course, Move Over Kids over here. So just keep on keeping on, everyone. We'll see you next Saturday for, uh, you know, the podcast. But then everything else, you know, I've been trying to do keep up with the news throughout the week and, and a little this, little that. There's actually going to be a mail call Monday this week. So just, you know, I appreciate every single one of you. Guys, it's dangerous to go alone. Please share this channel with a friend and have yourselves a wonderful.